Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. This is section 2.5, which deals with variation. The first thing we're going to consider is this simple shape right here. This is, of course, a square. Hopefully, I drew it uh, proportionately. Now, a square has four equal sides. So I'm just labeling one side as s. That's my variable. This is some length s. Now, if I want to talk about its perimeter, and we'll call perimeter p, I can write an equation that represents the perimeter of any square. Now, if we think about it, perimeter is just the addition of all sides. Well, a square, all the sides are the same, so we just have four s's added together, or 4 times s. We can use variation, which is essentially just new terminology, or maybe you've heard it before, that describes an equation. So if we understand the terminology, we can translate from the English language into algebraic expressions. So here, I can say that the perimeter of a square is directly proportional to any of its one sides, with a constant of proportionality of 4, because each square has four equal sides. And that's what we're going to look at and explore here. So we, had, we were able to build an equation that it, explains the perimeter of a square. The first thing we're going to look at is direct variation. Now, just like we had here, p equals 4s, where these are what are my variables, because as s changes, p will change. These are what vary. But every variation equation has a constant of proportionality or a constant of variation. Either word is interchangeable. Now. If we look at direct variation, well, essentially what that means is that as y changes, x changes directly. They go in the same direction. If y increases, then x must also increase. So you could think of it as direction, direct variation. Um, if we want to build an equation, we must always remember that there is a constant of proportionality. So let's look at an example when it comes to direct variation. Some variable v varies directly with some variable t. And we're asked to find the constant of variation when v equals 16 and t equals 2. And we also want to write the variation equation. Essentially, what this is asking me to do is find k first. Now, to do that, we have to realize this says varies directly. So when I read it, I'm going to actually translate it. V varies directly. And when I read varies and directly, I know equals some k times the value t. v varies directly as t. Now, now that I've written this, essentially what I can do is plug in the information that I'm given. It says find this constant when I know v is 16 and t is 2. Now it's essentially just solving for k. So I can divide both sides by 2. And I find that k equals 8, because 8 times 2 is 16. This is my constant of variation, or my constant of proportionality. Now, if I want to write the variation equation, I just have to put k back into what I translated. So that my equation that I can use for any value of v and any value of t is going to be v equals 8t. This is my variation equation. Now, maybe the v is going to change. That means t is going to change in the same direction. If v gets smaller, then t must also get smaller, because they go in the same direction. That's why it's called direct variation. Well, there's another type of variation that we're going to look at, and that's inverse variation. If we're familiar with the word inverse, it means something is flipped or a reciprocal. Well, if we look at the variation equation, this says y varies inversely as x, which means x is in a denominator. And the reason why it's called inverse variation is because they're not direct. They go in opposite directions. As v increases, it's because we're dividing by a smaller number. x is decreasing, and vice versa. If y is decreasing, it's because x is being, becoming a larger value. k is constant. With every variation equation, we must remember there is a constant of variation. So let's look at an example that deals with inverse variation. 
y varies inversely with the square root of x, find the constant of variation and the variation equation when y equals 4 and x equals 9. Let's read it again and translate it. y varies inversely, that means something's going in the denominator, with the square root of x. So I put the square root of x in my denominator. So I've written the variation equation for this inverse variation. Now, it says find this k value when y is 4 and x is 9. Let's just plug those values in. y is 4, x is 9. We can have this equation to solve for k. Well, I can simplify this. The square root of 9 is 3. Multiply both sides by 3. So I get k equals 12. Now that I found this, it says find the equation as well. I just have to put it back together. And I'm going to write it right here. y equals k, which we found to be 12, divided by the square root of x. So y varies inversely with the square root of x with a constant of proportionality of 12. So there we have it. And maybe we'd want to rationalize that denominator, something we talked about in previous videos. All right, let's look at another type of variation, which is called joint variation. Joint variation basically says there's more than one variable. Joint is very similar to direct, except there's more than one variable. Jointly means we're going to join more variables. So if I read this, this would say y varies jointly as x and z, so two variables, x and z. So let's look at an example of that. It says find k and the equation if t varies jointly with the cube root of x and the square of d. So let's translate that as we read it. t varies directly, or excuse me, t varies jointly with the cube root of x and the square of d. So we've written the equation. Now we need to find the constant of variation, and we have to find the equation itself. So I'm going to stop right here. Here is the given information. t is 18, x is 8, and d is 3. Find that constant of variation and the variation equation. All right, now we're going to look at an application of variation equations. Here is the application problem. And again, it's a story problem, so I'm going to read it several times. It says, the force exerted by the wind on a window surface varies jointly with the area of the surface and the square of the velocity of the wind. If the force on the area of 20 feet squared is 11 pounds, when the wind velocity is 22 miles an hour, Find the force on a surface area of 47.125 feet squared when the wind velocity is 36.5 miles an hour. Now, that's a lot of things to keep track of. So when it comes to these application problems, we read it. So we understand the words, and I know what surface area is, and I know what miles per hour are, so I'm assessing that I understand the words. Now I'm going to try to take the given information, the force exerted by the wind. Well, right there, I'm going to say, let's use F to represent force. This force is exerted by the wind on a window's surface. Now, that surface, let's just call that S. And we're told that this force varies jointly with the area of the surface, so my surface area, and the square of the velocity. Well, velocity, let's just call that v. But it says the square of the velocity. So the force varies jointly. Varies jointly with the surface area and the square of the speed of the wind, the velocity. Well, I need my constant of variation. So here is my given information. Force varies jointly as the surface area and the square of the velocity of the wind. Now, let's take what other information does it give us? 
it tells me if the force on an area of 20 feet is 11, is 11, so the force is 11, and the area, my surface area, is 20 square feet, when the wind velocity is 22 miles an hour, and that value is squared. So, and then we get to our comma here. So essentially what I've done from the given information is just like in the previous examples, we were able to build this equation. What we need to do is solve for k. So let's pause right here at that comma and solve this. Well, I used a calculator. This, you know, these numbers aren't nice. We could do it. Uh, in, do the tedious math, maybe in the margins, 22 times 22, and then multiply that by 20, uh, and then divide 11 by this value here. Well, I've already done that, and it's something you could plug into a calculator and figure it out, but k equals, and I wrote it over there, 0 0.001136. So this is our constant of variation. Obviously, it's not a nice whole number or a fraction that we'd represent, but there it is. That is our constant of variation. Now that we know this, we can plug that back in, and now we can find the force no matter what the surface area or wind velocity is. So let me write my variation equation. The force uh, on a window is 0 0.001136 times the surface area times the velocity squared. All right, that's my equation. Now let's continue reading. Find the force on a surface area of 47.125 feet squared when the wind velocity is 36.5 miles an hour. Well, the only thing I'm missing here is the force. It tells me to find the force. So I'm given the surface area, and I'm given the miles per hour of the wind. So I'm just going to plug this information in, my surface area is 47.125. Actually, I need a little bit more space here. I'm just going to kneel down. My force is 0 0.001136 when my area is 47.125 and my velocity of the wind is 36.5 and we have to remember squared because that's part of our equation. Now, if we plug that into uh, a calculator, we're going to find that force. And remember, units are important in any story problem. The force is going to equal, and if we plug it into the calculator, we get 71.34. Now, what are the units? Because in every application problem, it's essential that we have units with our final answer. Well, let's go back to the problem and make sure we read it again. The force exerted, um, and it goes through and it says, the force is 11 pounds. Force is measured in pounds. So I'm going to give it unit of pounds. Another way to keep track of that is use dimensional analysis. Maybe that's a method you're familiar with. And we could find what the units of this are, which are actually uh, 1 over square feet miles per hour squared. So it's uh, not a nice unit, but it is what it is. So make sure you include those units. This has been section 2.5, variation. Thank you for watching.